Joining us live, Liberal Senator Holly Hughes. She's here with the studio with me. Good morning, Holly. Also, the Assistant Defence Minister, Matt Thistlethwaite. Uh, Matt, good to see you. Very timely that you're on this morning because there is that story that I just uh, told our viewers about. So are we going to send a warship to the Red Sea as per the American request? Morning, Pete. Morning, Holly. Uh, the request has been made uh, and the government is actively considering it. Um, Australia has had a presence in the Middle East for some time as part of Operation Manitow. Uh, we have five personnel who are working in the region um, and it's part of a allied force um, that's aimed at ensuring the stability um, and security, particularly of commerce, um, particularly shipping lanes in the area. And we've seen in uh, recent uh, weeks that those shipping lanes have been uh, impeded by Houthi rebels, uh, particularly the Suez Canal. Um, so that request has been made and the government is now working with the Chief of the Defence Force, in particular the Chief of Navy, uh, to see whether or not we can okay. uh, provide that ship. Sounds like that's going to happen, Matt. I mean, we've got subs on the line with the US, so we kind of have to, don't we? Well, we make our decisions based on what's in Australia's national interest. Uh, and we've certainly had a tradition of being involved in uh, allied operations where we're upholding international laws um, and trying to secure peace and stability, particularly related to ongoing commerce. And that's really what's at stake here. Uh, obviously, there's, there's a flashpoint at the moment in that region with, with the war in Israel, um, and that does carry some risks. Mm. Uh, but we'll make sure that we make decisions based on what is in Australia's interest. OK, well, on Israel, Holly, I'll come to you in just a moment, but uh, I'll stay with Matt on that point because you brought up Israel, Matt. Are you abandoning support of Israel by pushing for a ceasefire? No, not at all. Uh, if you look at the statement that was released by the Canadian Prime Minister, the New Zealand Prime Minister and our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, um, the wording is exactly the same as the resolution that was moved in the parliament by the prime minister and second by the leader of the opposition. And the resolution um, and that, that wording of that resolution makes clear that Australia uh, undoubtedly condemns the actions of Hamas, calls for the immediate release of hostages and recognises Israel's right to defend itself. But in doing so, it says that humanitarian international law has to be upheld. Um, and that's a, a position that the government has had consistently. Sure. Uh, we had the humanitarian pause that allowed aid, particularly food and water, to get into the region. We want to see that humanitarian pause instituted again so that aid can get back into the region. Yeah, I mean, the, the letter's fine. It was strong, uh, no doubt about that. But the, the thing is that you supported the resolution, which doesn't even name Hamas which, as you know, is a listed terror organisation. So why even do it when the US and the UK didn't? Because the resolution calls for the immediate release of the hostages. Um, and that's the key difference between the previous resolution, which Australia voted against, um, and this one. We call for the immediate release of those hostages. Uh, but it is a fact that human beings are literally starving to death in Gaza because... They have no food, they have no water, um, and children are dying. So we want to see those humanitarian pauses that were in place um, some weeks ago that allowed for a negotiated release of hostages. Uh, and we've seen close to 100 hostages released, which is a good thing, uh, and food and water to get in so people don't die. Okay. I think it's as, as simple as that. 